Well, it's top of the hour to everybody out there. Welcome to Waited to Win. Great to be back in the hot seat. A big thank you very much uh, to Daryl and, of course, Clyde and Darren Burrows have been doing a good job on Waited to Win. Hopefully, we can find you a few winners. Just a reminder about our social media strap. Pop us a message. We'd love to improve the product, and hopefully, we can tip you a few winners on today's program. Local racing takes us to the Western Cape. All right, so we've got eight races on offer. Like I said, we've got Darren Burrows with us as well as Daryl Marie. Uh, Clyde's just been off for a few days, uh, certainly wishing him well, and he'll be back in the hot seat in no time. All right, so the first race today goes off at 12.35. That'll naturally kick off the bar pot. It is an eight-race program, so I'm going to dive straight into it. I just want to look at the market quickly and see what we're doing in race number one. Uh, two press on regardless at about 15 to 10. Nine Fibonacci's at seven to two, and it's five to one and better bar those. All right, so I'm going to start with Darren Burrows on the line. Darren, hope to have you in good spirits. I know we had a break from local racing yesterday being Monday. Today, we all systems go ready to fire. Yes, ready to fire, Brandon. And uh, starting in race one, there is a horse called Fibonacci, number nine on the card, the William Longsword out of a trippy mare, first-timer. There's plenty of market support, and I've uh, received numerous messages about uh, how classy this horse is uh, at home. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Fibonacci make a winning debut. He's obviously got press on regardless to beat as he's had the two runs under the belt. All right, yeah, that's a, a good comment coming through from Darren. Thanks very much to him. So word is that uh, the Nanos can run a bit. The two-year-old Bay Colt, you'll be looking for the pink silks over there, the Stain family. And uh, we're going to go to Daryl Marie now and see what he likes in race number one. Uh, good comments over there about the first time. And uh, we always need to respect that because Vaughan Marshall, very good at getting them ready. Absolutely, Brandon. Uh, there is a comment in the computer form. Nice work, place chance. The damn one, one race of 1,400. <coughs> Excuse me, Brandon. But he is um, supported in the anti-post market. Just watch the betting closer to race time. That's all I could suggest. Of the race runners, I am taking my chance and bankering number two in the bar pot. Press on regardless. Now, he's had two starts to date. Over the 1,000 meters, he's been staying on him. Both of those starts. I think he's going to love the 1,200. And Brandon, take note of that form line. In his latest start, he had the... That listed juvenile winner on WSB met the Roscova or something That's like it. that behind him in his later start. So that form line has been franked. Like I say, I'm taking my chances, banker the two in the bar pot. All right. Naturally, it's the first leg of the bar pot. So let's dive into those selections, see what the guys are doing for race number one. It is uh, the first of eight, and I see that Daryl Marie is going to bank a number two, press on regardless. Second leg, banker one. Third leg, one and nine. Fourth leg, banker one. By two and six, by five, six, seven and eight. And the spend is only 16 rand. On to the first leg of the place accumulator, race number two. You need to have your strike on by 10 past one. It is over 1,200 metres, and I see there is a short price favourite over here. Uh, the one was Jewel Cat. is trading at about 12 to 10 in the market. Uh, three Zoomies at 11 to 2, and it's 10 to 1 in bets of are those. Straight to Darren Burrows we go. Darren, I see there's been a bit of support over here. I mean, Richard Faree at the moment, he can do no wrong. He's riding at the top of his game. Is this going to be your first selection? I mean, 12 to 10, about number one, Jewel Cat. Um, Brandon, not much value about uh, Jewel Cat. Yes, the horse to beat as she's had the experience, but I wouldn't be rushing out to take 12 to 10. You know, she has uh, finished, he has finished unplaced in both his starts. Uh, Zumi could improve on that debut, when fourth behind the abdicator. Uh, there's plenty of well-bred first-timers. I would include numbers six and seven, both being by Rafif, a Vaughan Marshall first-timer and Dean Kahneman first-timer. But watch the market closely. Um, of the race runners, numbers one, three, four, and eight have to be included. Okay, so perhaps we play around, um, I think, very skinny, the source in the market. So we're going to chat to Daryl Marina as well. Daryl, I just want to see, is there any room for this source Manchester fighter in your play? Brandon, have a look. He actually beat the favourite on debut. But then Jewel Cat reversed that quite convincingly in his second start. Now, Jewel Cat, prior to his debut, in the computer form, the comments were very, very upbeat. So they were expecting a decent debut and he delivered on debut. With those two runs under their belt, I think he is the horse to beat. But uh, Darren has said 
there isn't much value in his current price. Brandon, that form line, Golden Tatiana came out to win the trippy stakes. So it also has been franked. Experience on his side, I'm happy to bank him in the PA. All right, lovely. Thank you very much uh, to both the guys. Um, yeah, Manchester fighter at about 12 to 1, a possible inclusion for your swingers, trifectas and quartets. Let's see what we're doing. First leg of the place accumulator. Selections up on your screen. Daryl Marie, happy to bank the favourite number one, Jewel Cat in the first leg. Second leg, one and nine. Third leg, banker one. Fourth leg, banker six. By five, six, seven, eight. By three, four, five and six. By two, three, four, twelve. And the spend's only 128 rand. All right, it is the first leg of today's pick six. It all starts now in race number three. And this is obviously the bet we all want to catch. Uh, so make sure you get involved. Uh, we had a break from local racing yesterday. And we're looking forward to firing on all cylinders today. All right, so what I'm going to do is quickly give you the markets. Um, very short, 14 to 10, number nine, Blue Holly. Uh, seven, Sidley, I think that's how we say it, at about six to one. Twelve is at six to one. And uh, the 14 is also at six to one. So uh, open race if you look past the favorite. So what I want to do quickly is go and link up with Darren Burrows who's on the line. Uh, Darren, tell us a bit about this horse, Blue Holly. I thought there was a cracking run last time out, moved up a winner going through the last 200 meters. I know the yard spoke confidently on that occasion. Should be too good for them? Uh, close to a banker, uh, Brandon. I thought really good effort last time out. She pulled five lengths clear of the third runner that day, who was Sidley, number seven in this race. And uh, on pedigree, she's going to love the step up in trip. So uh, Keegan DeMello in the saddle, close to a banker. I've only gone 9 and 12. I added in Oni San. Now, she was beaten 2.75 lengths by Raskova on debut. And I think the 1,000 was a bit on the sharp side. So 9 and 12 should see us through. The improver in the race is Sidley, number 7. Okay, lovely. We will bring you a rerun as well of that uh, horse blue Holly who's trading now at about 13, 14 to 10 in the market. Let's go to Daryl Marie. Uh, Daryl, lovely run last time out. I actually remember they caught up with Glenn Cotson beforehand and they were upbeat of a big run and these two horses kind of pulled five lengths clear of the third horse. Yeah, absolutely. They dominated the finish on that occasion. Um, there's no reason to believe she won't appreciate the extra furlong, the extra 200 metres. Having her third run, I mean, she must be very close to having peak peace, grace in fitness on her side, Brandon. So I make her the filly to beat. I actually fancied her chances last time out because she caught the eye on debut. But one that definitely did catch the eye on debut, in my opinion, is number one, Strata. Now, she's got a lot of ground to make up, but we are going to show the viewers that replay, Brandon. Uh, she gets into the race very, very late, and she's well-related. Uh, she's assisted to African Reign, a well above average sprinter himself. So I'm not saying that she'll be able to reverse that form, but in my opinion, she'll definitely go much closer this time around. So I'm going to tip them nine from seven. I mean, nine from one. Okay. Well, there we go. Um, we're going to have a look at that replay as well. Let's go and see what happened uh, with the source last time out, your favourite. Um, you can see the eventual winner, the Charleston, trained by Candace Bass Robinson and Aldo Dermeyer on the extreme inside. Got the green body with the red cap and Blue Holly directly next to it. In fact, Blue Holly is probably just in front for now, but the Charleston quickly gathers itself and comes hard. And you can see Sidley just in behind racing with the red and white. And you won't see Strata for now, but that'll flash home to run fourth just behind um, the eventual third placed runner that was Sidley. Lovely run from the favourite Blue Holly and I think going to take quite a bit of beating when it comes to the first leg of the pick six. Alright, so let's go and see what we're doing with the pick six. I know the guys have put their heads together. Uh, Darren Burrows, well he's had enough time to study this card. Uh, this is his home base. He's based in the Western Cape and he gets all the information we need. He's gone 9 and 12 in the first leg. So he's going to back up the favourite 9, Blue Holly, with the 12 on his sand. Second leg, one, two, seven, eight, and 11. By banker, six in leg three. By two, three, six, seven, nine. By the bigger field in leg five. By one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and 12. And the spend is 3,200 rand.
I love the jackpots. We get an opportunity at two jackpots this afternoon. We'll start off with the first one. It begins now in the fourth race. I just want to glance across and see what the market's doing as of 10 past 10 this morning. We know it's a pre-recorded show. Uh, the one horse is trading at about 33 to 10. Uh, Cabona Lacerdi, that's a weak favorite, 33 to 10. Eight Simply Beautiful at 9 to 2 and it's 11 to 2 and better bar though. So quite an open race. Let's go to Darren Burrows. We need all the Hope we can get what do you like in the fourth race darren uh well i can tell you all the talk in cape town at the moment is for cabona la uh the connections are very upbeat uh, yesterday already um he ran second to noble city he was taking off late he had rosh kadesh behind him who came out to win so that four nines already standing up it's still early days and if he can confirm that effort, because he did start 100 to 1, if he can confirm that effort, he's going to take all the beating. So Cabona Lacetti over Mighty Mac, who blew the start last time out. And I was quite surprised to see him run on for third. Uh, of the rest, Hawk Circle, Simpy Beautiful, and Stella Eclavi. All right, yeah, Cabona Lacerdi ran a good race last time out at about 100 to 1 in the market. I'm just having a look on debut, it was 125 to 1. Um, let's go and chat to Daryl Marie. Daryl, I always get a little bit worried um, when you see those runs 100 to 1, 125 to 1. Is it just a case of maybe it doesn't show too much back at home? Well, I'll tell you something, his debut was very moderate, so it's no surprise to see him start the price he did in his second start. But he was a gin strike on that occasion. I'm sure the gin boys got a few swingers and trifectas. I just loved the improvement that he's made. I watched that replay, uh, Brandon. Now we are going to show the viewers. And I thought he did extremely well to close in like he did in the finish. I mean, he pulled clear of the third place runner, which Darren said has already franked the form. The winner could be anything. Remember, he's related to the great one winner battle force. Um, I think having his peak run, over the same track and trip, I make him very, very hard to beat. The danger I made was number seven, Hawk Circle. Um, very disappointing today, but comes back in trips, and they are trying to settle blinkers. So for me, I'm not looking past one or seven, or one and seven. All right. Yeah, sounds like Daryl got a few of the places at 100 to 1 last time out. Um, and let's go and see this replay. Daryl's going to talk us through it. Uh, Cabona Lacerdi, oh, that's your current favourite. You can see about four or five lanes off them. Rosh Kadesh is on the extreme inside, and uh, the eventual winner is going to start to work into the race with a big white blaze, Daryl. Yeah, Cabona Lacerdi is actually on the extreme left hand side. Uh, look at his stride, Brandon. A huge stride on him, and watch how he quickens up in the latter stages. Um, I thought this was a very eye-catching performance. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more to come. You can see the winners off and gone like a dirty shirt, Noble City. Rosh Kadesh flattened out late, was a little bit slow into stride and made up the ground and then stopped, but has subsequently come out to win a good race. And the horse we're speaking about ran second there, Cabona Lacedi, and that was a cracking run. Going to take all the beating and could be some value at about 33 to 10. All right, so Daryl Maurice tipped us a jackpot. The first leg is gone one and seven. Second leg, two and six. Third leg, five, six, seven and eight. And and the last leg of the jackpot, he's gone three, four, five, and six. And the spend is only 64 Rand. Start of jackpot two. We need to get on quite early. Obviously, we all waiting, rearing to go when it comes to this local meeting in the Western Cape. Just a reminder again about our social media strap. Please jot down the details, pop us a message, and uh, we'll definitely get back to you. And more importantly, tip you a few winners on today's program. Hopefully, by this time, we're up a few South African rands. Uh, if you're punting overseas, hopefully you up a few, um, whatever the case may be, wherever you may be, maybe up a few pounds and you can send us a few. Uh, uh, we'll jump into the selections here quickly and uh, have a look at the markets. I see six Supreme Dream, 15 to 10, two catches if you can at about 28 to 10, nine to two, the one summer night city, and it's 15 to two and better bar those. All right, so Darren Burrows on the line to help us. I tell you, Darren, you've got your followers out there. I've got a few messages from guys that are actually watching from in America. Uh, they're watching from all over Europe. So they'll be on, they'll be supporting the game today. And you need to find us a few winners what are we doing over here in the fifth race well brandon i haven't tipped a jackpot but i've tipped my best bet on the card i thought the guys can bank this in their jackpot too and they can have a bet is called supreme dream 
I was very impressed with that last performance because I actually labeled Busy Lizzie on that occasion. And uh, she challenged Busy Lizzie the final 200 meters. I know it's a special weights race and she's giving weight away, but I just feel this filly could be a class above. So I thought Supreme Dream my best on the card. Supreme Dream. <laughs> I don't want to open up uh, old wounds because um, I know a certain individual liked this horse last time out at a big price. And um, I'm going to glance across. I don't know what his face is doing at the moment. Um, yeah, there we go. I think uh, the lip says it all, uh, Daryl. He liked this horse at a big price last time out. And uh, I thought a touch unlucky. I know the winner won very well on that occasion. But um, you're going with this one? You're going to get your money back? Yeah, you'll recall, Brendan, last time out she came into the straights and she went in. The winner came out and she found a bit of interference behind runners. I thought if she got a clear run in the straight, she would have gone close to winning. There's no doubt she's going to love the additional 200 meters. But I just think in a special weights event, giving six and a half kilograms to catch us if you can is going to be a big task. So I don't make it a one-horse affair. I've got very healthy respect for the number two. Now, last time I marked Richard Free from the widest draw of all, gave her a chance. And if you watch that replay, she took off in the latter stages. She's got a good draw. Uh, I think she'll go closer to the pace this time around, and I'm not willing to uh, separate the two of them. For me, two and six to dominate. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly have a look at um, this replay. Let's dive into the replay, see what uh, the guys saw last time out. And the horse we're going to focus on is Supreme Dream, who's got the red sleeves and the yellow cap. And at this point, Daryl, what were you hoping for? I was hoping you'd come out, but you can see Blizz Busy Lizzie comes out. Now, she goes in for a run, and you'll see she gets taken up for a stride or two over here, Brandon. There you go. There you go. So, uh, Busy Lizzie certainly got first run on her, but she knuckles down gamely, and um, there's no doubt the extra will suit her. Now you can see now the jockey hard at work on Supreme Dream. That was Cabello Matsanyane, and definitely coming at them hard. The eventual winner's got the whites on the outside, Busy Lizzie, who actually wins a cheeky race at the end of the day. But, yep, Supreme Dream, big improvement forthcoming over there. And I really do believe at about 14, 15 to 10, this is probably the horse we need to focus on. All right, we're going to go into those selections quickly, see what Darren Burrows has told us. He's told us Supreme Dream, going to be one of his better bets on the program so if you're punting in pounds yeah you go if it arrives contact me and i'll certainly send you all the details that you need but supreme dream at about 14 to 10 horse they all need to beat All right, so we move along. We go on to race number six this afternoon. It's off at half past three. It is over 1,800 meters. I just want to call up the market and have a look at who's favorite. The seven, Sarki, is at about 12 to five, 22 to 10 in that sort of region. The six, Alphabet, is at 33 to 10. Two, Zippy Overs at nine to two, and it's eight to one in bets about those. Straight off to Darren Burrows we go. Darren, what do you like over here? Sarki at about 22 to 10. I know that Peter Musket had always spoken positively about alphabet as well it could be some value um i made it between those two runners you mentioned now alphabet was returning after a short break it was her first run in cape town um it was an eye-catching effort she finished a short head behind sarki so there's only a nose separating numbers six and seven but i could see uh, alphabet improving a lot from that effort so if i had to um favor was narrowly it would be Alpha Betty over Sarki, and then for minor money, a horse like Zippy over. All right, Keegan DeMello rides Sarki, and uh, Sean Veals on the second favourite, Alpha Betty. Let's go to Daryl Marie quickly and see what he likes. So, yeah, you're going to make it a match race in two, Daryl? I'm uh, not 100% convinced. I th there's no doubt they are the young, up and coming, lightly raced, unexposed three olds who are improving. Uh, Brandon Bitt. A horse like number five of your Rocky Reef, uh, there's no doubt she's better than her later start. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm battling here, Brendan. But uh, Silver Lynx came out and won the Clappen. Lady Silvana won from there too. And have a look at her form prior to that. She was very consistent of higher ratings of 78 and 79. So for 77, I'm not ignoring her chances. And this number eight, Puerto Moi, very disappointing last time out. But she is a blinker strike. If she gets to the front, Brandon, I expect major improvement from her. So although I favor the, the, the six and the seven, 
I don't think it stops there. All right. Okay. Um, so Daryl seems to think it's quite an open race. Um, just chatting to Darren as well. Perhaps a match race between Sarki and this was Alpha Betty. Let's go and see what we're doing in terms of selections. Uh, Daryl Marie's gone exact a boxed. He's gone five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight. Exact a boxed. Twelve rand is the spend, and you need to be on by half past three. We move along to the penultimate, which will be race number seven. Good race, probably one of the better races on paper. I see Port Louis, number five, is your five to two favourite. Three, two a phase at 15 to four. Four, look for hounds at nine to two. And it's 13 to two and better bar those. Let's go to Darren Burrows. Um, Darren, is there any space in your selections for Russian Rock, who's a decent price, 13 to two? Well, Brandon, this is the race. I played the field, but I'm expecting a massive run from Future Prince. Now, he's got so much ability, this horse. Um, last season, he was uh, top class. This season, he's uh, he ran fourth on his comeback run behind Captain's Ransom. And then I don't think he quite sees out to 1,800. So the drop back in trip with 52 kilos, um, I don't know what to make of him. But I do believe that he can win a race of this nature if bouncing back. Um, others, I would include the stable companion, Port Louis, Look for Hounds, Russian Rock, and the race goes on. Yeah, it's quite a trappy race. Uh, I'm not sure I'd be diving in far after two about your favourite, which is Port Louis. But we're going to chat to Daryl Marie. Maybe he disagrees. Um, Port Louis, far after two. You think race time will drift a bit? Yeah, I don't think there's much value in his chance. Just take note, Keegan DeMello is riding. Uh, Louis is unable to do that 54 kilograms. Um, I think the race is more open than what the betting suggests. Uh, very keen to see the jockey arrangements on number four, Look for Hans. Um, I thought this may be the stable elect. Well, Pierre Cornet offers opted to ride number one, 55 uh, Not too sure about that, but I certainly have a preference for the four, Look for Hans. Does extremely well of this course in distance, having his peak run. It's certainly one for the shortlist. Two FA with those blinkers, very, very consistent. And then Future Prince, no doubt better than his latest. And his best end of year, 52 kilograms, he's going to be the improver. Uh, so, uh, three, four, five, and six, Brandon. No mention Russian Rock. Uh, no, this was, I can't take him seriously. On his day, yes. Uh, he can go with the best of them, but a horse like him, he always over races. Um, if he settles in running, he could certainly be the right horse, but I don't know. I don't know. I see him pulling again. <laughs> Can't take him serious. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move along. Let's when go to the selections. I just want to have a look quickly and see what the guys are doing. I know that Daryl Marie is going to come up and just add one more thing over here when it comes to race number seven. Um, Daryl, is that Russian Rock you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. You found him 433 days later. So if he comes to find me, Brandon, I'm going to blame you. Eh? Oh, Daryl, I tell you what, we could sit here hours talking about horses that have come to find us. Um, yeah, that's, that's another day. That's a story for another day. But I see Darren Burrows has gone future prince over here. Nice value. Also at about 13 to 2 in the market. He's a four-year-old Bay Gelding and Cabello Matsignani has been booked to ride for Brett Crawford. All right, the lucky last is upon us. All things being equal, we should be off at about 16.40. Three to one joint favourites over here. Three, Virginia Sweet and the four, Veronique. Six to one, number five, Enchanted Creek. And it's eight to one and better bar those. So Darren Burrows has kindly excused himself. He said it's a difficult race. He's going to leave the floor in the centre stage to Daryl Marie. So all the pressure over there. Uh, let's go and chat to Daryl. Let's see what he likes over here. Very difficult race, I might add. Three to one joint favourite, Virginia Sweet and Veronique. Um, you think the win will come from them? Can I excuse myself too? Yeah, been left alone many, many a time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Brandon, I'm not getting into the race, this race with confidence. But you know, Veronique on paper could be the right one. She beat Virginia Sweet and she's better off at the weights. But Virginia Sweet now gets the booking of Richard Free. She's obviously enjoyed coming back in trip. Fly to Rio enjoys this track and trip. Two from uh, two of her career victories have come over here. A good draw, Joshua from uh, Stalgate number two, 54 and a half to shoulder. She should be included. And the, by this time of the day, we'll know where the supreme dream 
as one or not. And she represents the Busy Lizzie form line. Busy Lizzie, you know, late to start, Brandon, she was given a chance from that wide draw. She quickened up extremely well. I see them adopting similar tactics, and I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see her go back to back. Daryl, I just want to quickly chat to you about, um, before parting shot, completely off subject, um, the weekend's racing, I mean, fantastic. Uh, Rachel Venneker shining, certainly a great ride on Eye of the Prophets, and I thought the last race uh, winner, she was yeah. unbelievable. She was. Uh, does she need that one and a half kgs? Debatable, <laughs> but um, I just think she's different class. I mean, yeah. she's such a humble human being as well. She deserves it. I'll tell you something. Some of that footage that was coming through from the course was outstanding. To see her pushing that horse's neck down and getting the best out of him was brilliant. I mean, she's really um, done extremely well and uh, she can only improve. And uh, yeah, I'm all behind her. All right, there we go. Yep, thank you very much to Daryl Marie. Thanks to Darren Burrows. They put a lot of time and effort into the show and they'll be looking forward to the week that's upcoming. Let's go and see what we're doing in terms of selections. Lucky last, exacta box. Daryl Marie, two, three, four and 12. Two, three, four and 12. And the spend is 12 rand.